Hi there, and welcome to Security Skills. In this video, we're going to show you everything you need to know about radios whilst working in the security industry. How to use them, how to communicate on them, and the do's and don'ts. So Anthony, radios. Why is it important to know how to use one properly and to communicate on one properly as well? The reason we need to know how to communicate on these is because they're essentially safety equipment for us. That's the item you're gonna use when you're in trouble and you need help. So we need to make sure that they're working, they're functioning well, and we're communicating correctly whilst using them as well. And obviously depending on the organization as well, they might introduce things as pro words. Can you talk to us a little bit about pro words? Yeah, sure. Um, so pro words are something we use um, as a, almost a way of coding information we're passing. Um, so for example, we might have code words for if there's a altercation inside a venue. Uh, instead of yelling fight over the radio, we might have uh, some kind of uh, code words such as fives or tens. Uh, that's often used uh, as a way of sort of understanding uh, as to whether it's a, an argument or it's got physical fives being an argument. Tens being we need people, everybody there because there's a physical altercation. We also used to use the, the, the code Champagne where I used to work, uh, one of the locations many years ago. And it would just again indicate everybody drop what they're doing, rush over and, and assist because we've got a physical altercation. Champagne, I like it. <laughs> and obviously I'm sure a lot of people already know about the phonetic alphabet, but can you talk to us why it's so important that people do know it? Yeah, it's super important to know the phonetics because um, it's, it's easy to talk about it, but maybe harder to understand unless you're using a radio. It's very easy for things to be misheard on a radio because of distortion when, when using it. Um, so we need to make sure that we um, cover using phonetic alphabet, um, such as Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta. It makes it much easier for people to understand um, when we're communicating. Yep, we've got it for the letters and we've got it for the numbers as well. That's correct. Um, we use it for numbers as well because even numbers can be misheard. Um, and you'll be able to see on the screen uh, the numbers uh, for phonetic alphabet as well. Uh, and, and again, numbers are also spoken in the singular term. So when we're um, communicating, say 1006, we wouldn't say 1006 on the radio, we'd say 1006 uh, for clarity. Yeah, there's a few numbers that sound a bit different, isn't there? You have to pronounce them a bit differently. That's correct. So uh, numbers like uh, five becomes five, um, seven becomes seven, uh, nine becomes nine, and we always say zero, we don't say O oh or naught. Okay, so zero is very easy to remember. Right, so we've gone through why it's important to know how to use your radio effectively and how to communicate properly on it, but let's show them. Let's go through an actual demonstration with the radio. Yeah, excellent, let's do it. Okay, so we're here and we've got our radios. Now it's fair to say that usually the company you're working for should supply you with radios, right? That's correct, yes. Yeah. All right, well, let's have a quick run through how to turn it on, how to switch channels, all that jazz. Yeah, sure. So um, basically most um, radios look pretty much the same. Um, we've got uh, two rotary switches at the top here. Um, the, on this particular model, on the outside, you've got the uh, on-off uh, combined with volume. So a click turns the radio on, and then turning the volume up um, to your desired uh, level. Um, and you can hear it also tells you what channel you're on. Uh, now this one has multiple channels. It's a digital, so it probably goes up to 100 different channels. Uh, very important when we start our shift, uh, we do a radio check. One of the things we're checking is one, that it's charged up, obviously, and, and functioning, but also that we're on the correct channel. Um, so security might be on one channel, you might have bar staff, you work in nine eco economy, might be on a different channel, you might all be on the same channel. Um, it does vary from, from place to place, and of course, um, from size venue as well. If there's a lot of people, maybe we need alternative channels. All right, well, now for the important part, how to talk to someone. Right, so the important thing to note is um, that this is not a mobile phone. Um, so just how you hold it and how you talk to people on this, it's quite important. You see a lot of people talk as if it is a mobile phone, so they'll hold it up like this when talking. Well, actually, your microphone's right there. Um, and where you want to be talking is at sort of right about, a, again, like about a hand size distance away from, from your mouth. Um, now, 
I don't just talk into there and expect people to hear me. Um, this is a um, sort of transmit or receive. It can't do both at the same time. So by default, it's on receive. So essentially we'll be able to hear radio traffic. Um, but in order to engage the channel and engage the microphone, um, we need to hit the uh, button over here, which is uh, PTT, which is uh, press to transmit or push to talk, some people call it. Um, and that's usually operated by the thumb. Uh, you have to hold the button in to continue talking. When you finish talking, you release your button, um, or your thumb pressure, and you'll hear it, it releases. So just as an example, push the button. You normally will see some kind of transmission light will come on. In this case, it's a big red light. I will transmit whatever I have to say and then release. Uh, it's very important that we transmit as quickly and briefly as possible because we don't want to hold up the channel if we've got 20 people using that channel. Nobody else can transmit while I'm transmitting. So it's very important uh, to listen out to uh, ongoing conversations, something that might be happening already um, that I might be stepping on if I jump in. All right, nice one. So let's go through a demonstration from start to finish of checking that our radios are working. Wherever you're working, these should be stored um, when the venue is shut in a charging bank or charging bay. So you ideally want to pull this radio off the charging bay. And if they do have a green light or anything like that to show it's fully charged, pick the one that's um, showing green and not flashing to show it's still charging. That way you know it's got a full charge. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing you want to do is obviously uh, switch the radio on using your on and volume. Power on. As you can hear, it tells you power on and tells you the channel and gives you sort of an idea of volume. At that point, you may do a radio check call. Um, and of course, find out what channel you're on. You do that while you're at the office. Which channel are we on tonight? We're on channel one. Great, if I want to change the channel two, very simple. Again, rotary switch here. Change the channel two, whichever channel we want to use. At this point, when I'm sort of just near the office, I'm just walking away, that's where I would normally jump on the radio and uh, put in my first call of the night, which would simply be a radio check call. So again, this is very localized, but let's say, for example, I had a call sign allocated. My call sign was uh, Whiskey 1-4. So my call sign is Whiskey 1-4. I'm going to contact control and I'm just going to say, if not control, I'm just contacting the airwaves, everybody else on radio, and just go uh, something along the lines of uh, Whiskey 1-4 radio check over. Um, now, if I have a central control, they might come back to me, or everybody else on frequency might just come in and go, yeah, receiving loud and clear. They don't necessarily, and again, it's down to where you work, whether they're gonna all have a call sign, it's not necessary. We're just trying to check, to make uh, sure our system is working you've got a control and you're going to contact them directly, what we would do in that situation is say, uh, Whiskey 1-4 to control, radio check over. Uh, and then uh, let's say control comes back to us and they'd say something along the lines of, uh, control to Whiskey 1-4 uh, receiving you loud and clear, or they might use something along the lines of the one to five scale. Uh, ones being, I can barely hear you, Five by five, meaning I'm hearing you loud and clear. Uh, that's a military size, uh, type of scale that's used and, and used in aviation, not necessarily used in day-to-day -day operations in a nightclub environment. Yeah, so I noticed there in the example, when you finished speaking, you said over. Correct. Not over and out. Correct. Uh, that's something from the movies. Uh, in reality, uh, the, the word over means that I've uh, finished my transmission, I've taken my finger off the transmit button, and I'm expecting some kind of response from a colleague or controller. Um, if I say out at the end of a transmission, uh, that means that I've completed my transmission and I'm not expecting a response from you. So if I finish my transmission with out, it means that you don't have to worry about acknowledging that at all. So for Unimportant things like that, like radio check, um, you know, and they come back, you said, receiving you five by five. I might not even have to respond to that, but if I did, I'd say uh, copied out. Um, that's it, we're done, we're done transmitting. If I say over and out, it's contradictory. Uh, because if um, I say over, I'm expecting a response. I say out, I'm not expecting a response. What, do I, what am I expecting? So that comes from the movies. It's not um, a reality uh, into day-to-day -day operations. Uh, one last aspect that is probably worthwhile mentioning is just, um, Whenever it's important information, registration plates, things like that, um, passing that kind of information across, we always want to read back that information. So if I'm passing you, you know, I've just spotted a vehicle uh, number plate, Golf 8, Charlie Mike Kilo, something like that, um, you would always then 
potentially have written that down and then read that number plate back to me. And that's to stop any kind of um, misunderstandings or something being missed. Okay, well, thank you very much, Anthony. We've covered so much to do with radios. The importance of being clear and concise, the importance of the phonetic alphabet, and of course, how to turn on and operate your radio, as well as checking that it is fully charged before you leave for shift. But that's all from us. If you do have any questions about how to use your radio, then please put them in the comment sections. But remember to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell for more helpful videos.